Hey guys, how you doing? Uncle Steph here. So in today's video, I'm going to give you the step-by-step -step how to land your first entry-level developer job in 2025 with the advancement of AI and the slow restructuring of development jobs across the industry. Things are changing just a little bit depending on where you're looking for your entry-level job. So the process that I've been teaching for years, it's still good today. 100% and let's just jump into it. So rule number one, you have to learn the fundamentals. So that means not jumping into a full React course or an Angular course or learning to build games with some online tutorial. You have to get to the fundamentals. The fundamentals of software development, the sub fundamentals of code, so you understand not only how to build something, but you understand the principles and the techniques and the concepts behind what it is you are building. I recommend that you learn the web stack, although there are jobs in many different types of development. The reason I recommend the web stack is because it offers the widest variety of job opportunities in terms of uh, small companies, medium-sized companies, big companies. They all use the web stack. And a wide range of types of jobs, you know, outside of working for somebody, maybe you want to get into freelance or something. The web stack is the most viable. It is the dominant platform for software development. So when learning the web stack, that means HTML5, CSS3, responsive sites, and some JavaScript, of course. That is the key to it all. So you should be able to lay out responsive websites as HTML and CSS3. And with JavaScript, you should understand the DOM, how to manipulate the DOM, and the basic constructs of the JavaScript programming language, of course. In addition to that, you should learn, if you want to maximize your opportunities to get a job, in addition to that, you should learn the basics of the full stack, the basics of CRUD development. CRUD is create, read, update, and delete. That's basically being able to create a very simple web app where you can have websites connected to databases and you can move information back and forth. You could do that with JavaScript, you could do that with Python. I recommend PHP because again, in terms of small business web app development, which is key to this whole process I'm outlining here, it gives you the most opportunity. So beyond the languages, you have to understand the architecture of the web. You have to understand what web browsers are, what web servers are, domain names. You have to understand the request response model. You have to understand the stateless nature of the web, how code is processed by the browser, how code is processed by the server. Any decent web stack course will teach you these things. This is fundamental. When you understand this stuff, it will make building apps very easy. It will make learning a framework like or, or library like a React or a framework like a Vue much, much easier. In software, there are some technologies that are very, very dominant, very important. So for medium, large companies, React comes to mind, very popular. For many companies, whether it be small, medium, large, WordPress, the content management system, very popular. Now, when I'm evaluating technologies, by the way, I am not taking a technical position. I am not saying this technology is better than that, or that technology is better than this. I'm just talking about it in terms of market and job availability. You want to choose technologies that are uh, viable, meaning there's a demand for it, meaning there is a demand for that technology. There's no point learning the greatest programming language in the world or the greatest library in the world if nobody's using it. And believe me, some people would argue that's the case in some situations. Once you're comfortable with the fundamentals of coding, so you're comfortable writing the code, comfortable building simple web apps and websites, and again, you don't have to be a master. You just have to be have a basic understanding. Then what you should do next is get into studying the local job market. You're going to find that depending on where you live in the world, there will be different demands. Some areas... C-sharp might be very popular. Some areas, PHP might be popular. There may be a lot of WordPress jobs where you happen to be. There may be a lot of uh, React jobs. Who knows? So understanding the local job market, becoming familiar where the demand is, will help you a lot in terms of uh, getting that first job. So the next thing you got to do is you got to uh, build two to three, two to three small for free 
projects for some local business. Why? Because you want to get some real-world experience under your belt. You want to understand gathering specifications, uh, dealing with people, delivering on something, even as simple as installing somebody's WordPress site, updating it, maybe helping them with their Shopify or Wix site. doesn't really matter. Maybe doing some basic CRUD work. The point is, is just to get that experience working with people. It's huge. It's huge. This is analogous to somebody who never steps into to the ring as a fighter who just hits the pads and heavy bags and maybe shadow boxes versus somebody who gets in the ring and fights real. Tutorials, one or two tutorials is fine to get familiar with a few things, but you want to get into the ring building real things as soon as possible. So why two to three projects? Well, it's a good number because it won't take up too much of your time. Not huge projects, but you know, something. And it's kind of a nice number. Two to three, get a little bit of experience because A, you're going to build your XPs, your experience. You're going to build your confidence because you've worked with a few projects. You do it for free because it takes a lot of pressure off the process. It takes a lot of pressure off you because you're not charging. So you don't have to worry about uh, so much. When you charge, you have a lot more responsibility. When you don't charge, you don't have, respons- you don't have too much responsibility, relatively speaking. And it takes a lot of risk as far as the person or the company you may be working with, the local small coffee shop, the local independent garage or something. Why? Because they're not paying you. So, you know, why not, right? The final reason to do this is to build your portfolio. So when you do go in for the job interview, you can say, look what I did. I was built these projects for this company here and this company there. That shows employers that you're able to deal with people. You're able to uh, interact with people, get things done. That's what they want to see. So the next thing you want to do is build a portfolio site. You need a place to demonstrate, to show what you can do. So the portfolio site better look good, number one. And it's also a place for you to showcase the two to three jobs I just spoke about. One of the worst things you can have are projects based on a course you did. Employers don't want to see that. You got to understand, it's not about the code so much, although it's part of it. It's much more about you being able to work with third parties, work with other people in a professional way. That's a big part of it that a lot of people new to the game don't understand. That's why you have to do the uh, free sites, as I suggested. That's why you have to have that portfolio site that has to look good. And it's also a place for you to showcase your real world experience. And finally, you want to learn AI. You want to start leveraging AI to uh, more quickly learn, leverage AI to be able to build stuff more quickly, and leverage AI and understand AI in terms of what AI can do now to solve problems, to do things that we could not do prior to AI. I am already seeing how AI is creating new coding opportunities, new development opportunities that just did not exist before. So it's already happening, and those who jump on it early are going to have a big advantage in the marketplace. Already, I saw an article where some places, I think in China now, they look at people, when they look at people they're going to hire, no matter what, it's not just coding, but many other places, they want to see that the person who they'll hire has some knowledge of AI and how to use it, how to integrate it into whatever profession they happen to be in. AI is an accelerator. It helps people to get the job done much faster. So that's no exception in the coding world and the development world. And of course, with AI, there are new opportunities that are being created. You are already seeing companies where their business model is based on implementing using AI to deliver products and solutions that they wouldn't have been, would not have been able to do otherwise. Some people have been fearing the evil AI. Don't fear it. It's just the standard, typical thing I've seen in terms of the coding world where new technologies come out, old ways slowly fade, new ways come into place. We're in that phase right now. And whenever you see this disruption that we're seeing now, this time it's caused by AI, it creates huge opportunities. So take advantage. I'm Uncle Steph. I teach people how to become professional developers, professional coders. I teach them how to start businesses, how to freelance, how to get jobs. You can check out my boot camps at unclesteph.com. And yeah, learn from my 36 years experience. I'll save you decades. All right. Thanks for watching. Cheers.